Good afternoon, everyone. A look at the U.S. Midwest farm fields three weeks ago. And I talked about what would happen if your food prices doubled or tripled as they did in the Maunder Minimum. And then a cold blast. And when the Washington Post talking about a cold snap of historic proportions, you know it has to be off the hook. You can see the progression of everywhere a blue dot is record cold broken and just continue following it across the East Coast. Sea smoke over the Gulf of Mexico. Coldest day on record for the Northeast U.S. ever for this early in the season. And thank you so much for all of you following me on Twitter. We just went over 5,000 followers. It is our group to share this information so we can all come up with solutions through this grand solar minimum. With gold sitting near seven-year highs and talk of possible gold and silver increases over the next year or two, and when we look across the news landscape, it's continual trade wars, negative interest rates, the Fed lowering rates, talks of stock market plunges are growing louder. Isn't it time you consider gold or silver? Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs' top-rated gold and silver IRA dealer. At Patriot, you work directly with an owner and avoid paying absurd broker fees. To request a free investment kit, click the link in the description box below or give a call today. We all saw the forecast maps of these ridiculous below normal temperatures of 30 plus degrees Fahrenheit so early in the season. And even looking back on October 31st, taken from the air here, Midwest farm fields blanketed in snow, hindering the harvest. That was two weeks ago. And now the all-time coldest polar blast in a century and a half swept through during this integral time of harvest and the last maturation of crops in the field. And when the Washington Post says that it's the most severe early November cold snap in more than a century, A, they're underreporting it because they keep using the word cold snap, but it was actually a century and a half and broke all records going back as far as we have records back into temperature stations across the United States, including some of the oldest temperature stations in the Northeast U.S. These Arctic temperatures reached all the way to the Gulf of Mexico, and you can see here on the tropopause model how this swept through, broke off the pocket of extreme cold air, and you can see the super cooled arctic air in that white blob just at the border of canada and the u.s south of hudson bay there two areas ripping cold but sea smoke over the gulf of mexico as this very cold air moves over the warmer water that would be a little spooky in my opinion to see the gulf of mexico with cold fog over it the 24 hour temperature change was as much as 32 degrees Fahrenheit in a single 24-hour shift. And Caitlin also putting up some amazing photos of the cold front blasting ahead, but take a look at the clouds that are in there. I think some of us will recognize exactly what those are with the dissipating striations there and these ghostly angelic clouds. And a fun fact here from the National Weather Service, New Orleans, the 13th of November, morning low temperatures compared to all of last winter, including January, February, the entire coldest depths of 2018-19 winter. This November 13th smashed through every one of those. Not even into the second half of November, and it still broke every cold record, including all of last winter's. In the southeast U.S., record after record falling there. And you can see how... This cold front swept across the U.S. without even looking at the temperature gradients or GFS models. Just follow the low temperature record smashed as it moves through the central Midwest plains over our crop growing zones right over to the east coast down into the Gulf of Mexico. Into Mexico, coldest in almost 200 years. Thousands of cold records broken this early in the season. Unprecedented is an understatement. And if you come over here to Maxar, that's maintained by the Midwest Regional Climate Center, what they have is a full list of what's called extremes. So it has to be above a certain anomaly amount to get into this extreme category. Now, most times they're talking about 18 degrees Fahrenheit difference or more to come into the extreme. That dark purple is where we're looking at extremes. So I thought, well, how extreme is extreme? 35, 40 degrees under the normal temperatures. That's extreme. 
So I was focusing a little bit up on the Northeast because they had the longest temperature records up there. You know, it was the first part of the United States when the ships came over from England at the time. It's brutally cold every single winter up there. And I thought, look how many extremes are up there in November. How cold could that really get? You know, Canada experienced that Arctic blast. You saw the white on the earlier tropospheric model. But Ontario and southern Quebec, these are temperatures in Celsius, but it was still minus 15 degrees Celsius. And when we get down that range, we're looking in eh, about 10 degrees Fahrenheit or so. But to be smashing these all-time record cold records going back to the 1870s by the dozens on the border up in Canada is something unusual. And then the daily low record here, Burlington, Vermont, earliest single digit low on record and again some of these records are stretching back into the late 1800s and even up in Maine the coldest on record for this early in the year dozens of all-time records shattered not breaking the old record by one or two degrees Fahrenheit but literally shattering it by 12 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than the previous record that stood for 130 years and they're trying to say that there's no grand solar minimum there's no problem it's all co2 going to make this into a hothouse planet and we're getting back to 200-year cold temperatures right now. So when I was presenting at Alternative View 10 in London, I'd pose the question, as this reconstruction from 1650 to 1710 in food prices across five different capital cities in Europe, the food prices sometimes tripled, sometimes 7x. So my question was, if our harvests are being affected at this rate already, what's going to happen when your food price doubles or triples? What are the first things that you're going to stop spending on and then trace that back through the rest of the economy, how it's going to shrink when you stop spending and others just like you stop spending on the exact same goods and services. Incredible visual graphic here. Colder than Alaska, most of the United States. Take a look at all this. Everywhere you see a green dot was a broken temperature record. And it seems to match up pretty well with what was seen on the extreme forecast and also what cool WX weather was putting together with the temperature charts along with NOAA and the National Weather Stations. And my wake up moment doing this video was taking a look here. Snowiest months on record. This is in Nunavut up on Baffin Island in northern Canada. October 2019 was the snowiest month on record apparently they've ever had. But obviously it gets too cold when it gets into you know December, January, when it's minus 40, it just doesn't snow. So this is the snow season currently, breaking all-time snowfall records in Baffin Island. And I thought, okay, I've seen this before. Where did I see it? Baffin Island. I encourage you to take a look at that Leonard Nimoy talking about the Ice Age starting. And the research that they did with Baffin Island specifically was pinpointed this to the Laurentide Ice Sheet Glaciation Pinpoint Start Point. Now, I have a whole PDF, actually several on this. I'll come back and do a different video on it. Links in the description box below. And this is an eye-opener here because for myself, I'm posing the question, is this the beginning of a larger cycle that's going to intensify over the next centuries? We shall see. But you'll notice in Europe where the cold temperature records were broken during the same time from the 9th of November to the 16th, it was all up around Norway, Sweden, Finland, but I thought it was so record warm up there. Weren't we lectured? How dare I bring that up? That is so inconvenient. And thank you for the overwhelming response on the Adapt 2030 t-shirt and hoodie limited edition November design that I unveiled. It's not CO2, it's not you, it's the sun. Merch is available through the end of the month. It's available over here on Teespring, links in the description box below, and it's another way to support the Adapt 2030 channel and keep information like this flowing to you, and I will see you next video.